Hey, what is up guys? Johnny here back with more Shadowgun Legends. We got a new update coming really soon. 080 just around the corner. And it comes with a brand new game mode, Capture the Flag 4v4 in PvP. And it comes with a new map. It's called Alien Cave. And in today's video, we look at the new map. So here it is, the top-down view of the alien cave map there's a legend on the bottom right so there's a few things they want us to know the team base on both extremities uh, with the shadow gun logos the blue and the red base this is where they put the flags on the video we also have two sniper points we have six jump pads we have the middle and the box is in the middle we see it in the video and also the spawn zones this is not clear and I will talk about it at the end of the video, but let's take a closer look. Now let's start at the base. This is where the flags are, the shadow gun logos. So from the base, you can go left or right on each side, but you can also go straight ahead and there's the first jump pad that will lead to a small elevated area. And from there, you can jump again and go in the sniper zones. Now this is a screenshot from the video and you see uh, two jump pads in the screenshot the first one leads to the elevated area and the other one on the corner leads to the sniper spot now remember the war games map it was pretty similar from the spawns you would go straight and had to go to an elevated area to jump on the sniper spots again with a jump pad so the idea is pretty much the same uh, left and right and middle and then the middle spot with the box so i really like what they did from the base there's a lot of ways you can go left right over under and same thing around the sniper spot you can go under you can go left right middle and even from the middle you can go back on the jump pads and go back in the corridors and it's a little maze out there there's a couple ways to go and uh tight corners to fight it's gonna be really interesting to fight around the corners from close range but again it gives a lot of power to the shotguns in these situations now this is a screenshot from the middle area and you see the box right there, pretty sure the two sniper zones will be able to cover the box. And from there you can go under in the like underground corridors or you can go back in the side tunnels uh, from the jump pads. Now the thing I kept for last is the big question mark, where are we going to spawn? Are we just gonna straight up spawn in the base or right in the middle near the flag? Or are we gonna spawn in the little dark areas uh, left and right of the flags because these are elevated and you don't have access you cannot go there you can just probably jump from there now remember in war games you could not just spawn kill the opponents or trap them in their spawn because there was a protection there was a wall and you could stay behind and go when you were ready you can jump down in the action on this screenshot you see the top left corner there's like a ship i think uh, on the elevated area so i would kind of hope that you spawn in the ship or something and you can jump down in the action when you can or when you want and maybe be protected and not be spawn killed so overall great job with the new map it is beautiful great design it's symmetrical that's what you're looking for for competitive gameplay you don't want one of the teams to have an advantage because of the map design so really important and they did it again like they did in war games so that's it for today that was the new map alien cave for capture the flag leave a comment below what you think about the new map how you like it and are you excited for capture the flag coming really soon in shadow gun legends now hope you like the video leave a like if you did don't forget to subscribe to the channel i will be back soon till then watch my other videos take care Uh, it's definitely been the case that Ikenik has kind of taken control as the number one player uh, on, on the glass cannon roll. And we've seen him uh, really show up with a stride, improving his own game throughout the course of today's event. So big props to him for that. And we're going to see if that...
trend can continue forward as Visca's pretty much switched off of playing aggressive or playing passively entirely. He's just grouped up with the rest of the team for the most part now. The card's getting a first blood for this round as he strikes it. And now though, we are seeing both teams try to push with an away squad to steal a flag. The problem though is there's pretty much no defense set up at all here. For the guys Marcel, on they're PSA. so low. Strum and Marcel so low in HP, and the cart wasn't able to finish them off. They're gonna be able to heal back up to 40, get across the midfield. The flag has not been picked up for ESA. I wonder if they have anyone there left to do it. Tietzi's trying to do something about this, trying to hold back. He could potentially pull this one off, and he does get the return himself. A nice little blink through there. And they are gonna be able to hold on longer. Their opponent's flag also gets sent back to base in the process, though, so no successful cap temp run out by the guys on ESA just yet to get that second point up on the board. It's going to turn into a very passive few seconds here. Ro inside, probably not looking the right way for this fight here right now, but Dalukar does pick one off with his rockets. Tending to limit out the numbers here a little bit for ESA. Oh, strafe action, the card there. Really hard to be hit. Visca, unfortunately, unable to do just that. Lapido able to get a big kill on a Dalukar. They are going to have a decent man advantage now. It's only one, but they have a positional advantage. Ro inside trying to push up the side again. Flag will be picked up in just a few seconds. It's going to be ESA again with the flag in their hands. We saw Marcel try to go in the last second to try to steal it away. They're just going to make sure he's dead by walking all over his dead body and going back to look, help assist this flag from traversing across this map. Fortunately, just a kind of rogue attempt to steal the flag away coming out from ESA there. Makes it a pretty good distance considering it was only one lone player that manages to try and steal it, but it's not going to be too successful in the long run. They were just a little bit too far off from being able to link up with the carry and take him the rest of the way. So he does go down, but now two more kills found all of a sudden here. Look at the spawn timers. They're getting to a dangerous point. If Lapidlo can get himself into the site and knock out Marceau, who's currently the only one inside defending it, Sturmoff is not too much of a trouble to deal with here. Does find himself a pickup versus Zyktik, so that has knocked out the glass cannon temporarily for ESA. But once again, it's the site that's really opened up right now. Lacart takes possession. Lapidlo was brought down very low. The good news is, though, is that Lacart is playing, I believe, on the support, so he'll have the opportunity to try and heal himself as soon as that this, comes off cooldown. He needs this frag against Stromwap, who's going to try to go in for the flag. He's got the HP advantage. He's trying to heal up as well before he goes in there. Very smart use of that one, realizing that the respawn is going to be there. Ikidix is going to be respawning back in to potentially stop Stromwap from taking this flag away. And he hits the shot. And now the car going to be coming in. Is there anyone else to actually pick this one up? Is there anyone here to shoot him? Or is he going to have a clean cap? Oh, Visca. It's going to challenge. I don't know if we even saw Ikidix note it, but it doesn't matter. That player ends up going down, and we do see our red team. Once again, that's ESA picking up this round. Well, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Potentially that final round kicking off. Ikidix, again, could be the man that I'm looking forward to see what he can do on that sniper rifle another time. He's been able to shut down so many individual players on the other team. This has not had a chance to really go up against him at all. See the push already coming in from the side, and Garnick able to get the first frag. They're all grouped up. It's so dangerous to go in this position, which means where is Lapidlo? Uh, is he actually going for the flag cap? Is he around the back side? You actually see him go right behind him. The Hunter Mines come in. They're all grouped up. The damage is going to be done. Strum off for the fall. They're being knocked down as well. They can't move. They have nowhere to run, nowhere to hide, except to their deaths. Luckily for them, though, there's no real chance for a flat cap to come through, but that's just got to be really disheartening. Massive life off the board. It's going to give so much room as well for the players on ESA just to push up the field. If they can wipe them off one or two more times, and they've got themselves a very fighting chance to get a clean cap oh out of this one. Gosh. Oh, Dalukar again, though, the player to turn things around, or at least it would seem to be the case. That's Gary Neck in the cart. They're not going to dive on top of the flag. They spot Marcel in the corner, try their best to overwhelm him. They don't have a lot of health for this fight, but they do get themselves onto the cap. They've got the shield to assist them in this situation, too. Tietzi is going to come and oh, run no. over one of the players from the blue side. Tietzi will get picked off in the process, but Gary gets himself away. Sturmoff was, hot was on the hot, on, yeah, on the hot pursuit, though, so he's not going to be able to get away with that flag. Gary Net goes down once again. You cannot outrun the runner. And in that 1v1, once again, Sturmoff will have to save the day for Nitro. It's getting really tense here. About to hit that 10-minute mark in this map, and that actually could have been the whole deal. Another kill comes through. This has got to be very frustrated. Ikenix had his number this entire series. It's a great grenade coming through to Marcel, though, taking the sniper out of the fight. see trying to push through, and they're still able to net themselves more kills. But as the respawn timer gets longer and longer, if Tietzi can sneak in, he could be looking at ESA for that last chance, that last run across the field. Storm awful, along with Raywin side, still trying to spam in for a little bit of damage themselves. Raywin side. Looks like he's got an easy kill, it seems, but unfortunately he's not able to find it just yet. Delacard in the meanwhile pick up some kills, but Raywin's side walking right in, gets himself an easy cap, an easy steal. Can he get away with it though? That's the question. He is playing on the tanks, so he's got the most health, but no. Gets completely overwhelmed by players from ESA, so it is not going to happen. He is not going to be able to escape his fate there. See, still see the Hunter Mine tracking a player there. Just never gives up. Looking for more kills. Visca now, you can see, not even trying to challenge anymore. Up against Ikenik. 
Too much giving up on that one outright. Which is giving him so much freedom, so much vision around the map. You see Visca right there with potential shot off if Vicnix is able to hit it. And he does take down Jarenek now, looking to push up. These shots are really hard to hit, to be fair. Actually, in the lack of them being able to actually find those shots, it's going to come back to haunt him pretty heavily because look at these respawn timers now. It is not looking good for ESA. It's a good thing that Ikenik did stay back on his own. But the respawn starting to come out. They're at least going to have a fighting chance to stay in a good position defensively here. It's not actually looking like we uh, saw much of an attempt from Nitro to actually move in and steal this flag at all. Visca is still just sitting back. Oh, no. The oh, timer. no, the sentry turret. Oh, He's no. trying to run behind it. He's trying to dodge. He's going to be shot in the backside, and that will be him finished up. That's so unfortunate. If that was anyone else, he could have been sneaky about that one. Nate immediately denies that player, too, as he tries to move in. So bye-bye to Visca for now. Tietzi's made himself a forward push, too. He's got a great opportunity to try and dive in. Lock out a few more players. Spawning one on the ramp. Well, it's going to take a little bit of assistance from Lapidlo there to be able to pick it up. But at the end of the day, here's oh, the pickup it? now from ESA. They've taken it away. Now can they get the cap? There's the defense. Actually, it's going to be Lapidlo to try to stop them the best he can. Honey Mines, anything thrown out. He does get the kill. That is going to be, though, at least for now, Nitro pick up the flag themselves. Marcel, what direction is he going to go? Are they, is he going to meet Lacard? No, he's going to go through the middle. And Dollar Card's not going to be on the hunt. Oh, actually, they might meet each other. Lacart from behind. Marcel could be huge. He could be the playmaker. Or it could be the downfall here of Nitro. He's trying to run away. He's trying to stay alive. It's going to be him up against the flag here. They get the return. Is he going to go for the score? Is this going to be it? Is ESA going to take this one home? Lacart making the run in. There's no one else to cap it as far as we can see. Has the support of the shield now. No one's on that flag. It's in, ladies and gentlemen. And with that, ESA are your champions here.